What a God we serve on this Sunday morning. I wish all of you were in church with us today. It's just a very few here that we have to have in order to bring you online service. But thank God for the capability of reaching you in your homes. I thought just this week how blessed we are that now we can at least broadcast to every home and to reach you wherever you are with a good worship service and the preaching of the word of the Lord today. Thank you for tuning in and I trust that you have your family around you. I hope you're not just taking church lightly today. Let's have a good move of the Spirit of God in our homes today. All over America, churches are not able to gather, so we have, have to do what we have to do. And I am happy to comply with our president, our governor, the leaders that we have to save lives and to help our community and to grow strong and to do whatever we must do to get past the crisis that has come upon our world. So we will make the best today of bad situations as business owners do in this time. So must the church do. And we pray for our businesses. We pray for people who are now unemployed. We pray for those who have contacted this terrible virus, for those in their families who've had great loss, our prayers are with you. As a matter of fact, I want to take a moment this morning before I go into the word of the Lord just to say to especially Christian Life Church, and if you're watching and you're not a member of this church, it's wonderful that you're here and watching us, and we invite you to be in much prayer much prayer. Someone suggested that we come to the church and pray, but we're not going to do that because we don't have somebody to clean up after everybody else every hour on the hour. But we're going to ask you to pray at home. Pray diligently. Take time to pray. Gather your family around you and pray. Seek God. And I still believe the scriptures that said, if my people who are called by my name will pray. Second Chronicles 7.14, you ought to go to mark it in your Bible because it stands very real for us in this moment. There's a time when God needs to heal our land, and that time is right now. We need for God to send his blessings and healing touch upon America and upon the world. So I invite you this morning very quickly to the word of the Lord let me talk to you about some things that are in my spirit today. First of all, I want to thank our praise team for leading us in worship today. It's not easy standing up here singing to an empty church, but they have put their heart into it, and the Spirit of God is certainly in this room on this Sunday morning, and I trust it is in your house as well, and I know it can be and will be. It was a few weeks ago a friend of mine preached in this pulpit Brother Ronnie Lacombe, and he preached to us that there's always faith over facts. If you haven't heard that, you need to go to our website and look that message up and re-listen to that because it's time for us to believe that. Our faith in God, our faith in God is so vitally important in the hour especially in which we live right now. So I want to remind you just for a few moments today how important it is that we keep the faith, that we stand strong. I've, taught, I've texted several people this week that have texted me, and I always try to text back and say this, stay strong. You need to turn to your family today, wherever you are or whoever you're next to, and if you're not by anybody, do it to yourself. Just say these words, stay strong. Because staying strong in the faith, is what's going to take us through the crisis of this hour. It was Abraham that is called the father of the faithful. The scripture came to me this week, and I know that this is trying times. I know it's, it's trying times upon finances and upon homes and upon children and, and teenagers that aren't able to go to school and 
people that have not been able to attend their college classes and all kind of things have been put at a standstill in our world. So here's what the book of Romans chapter 4 and verse 20 said, talking about Abraham, the father of the faithful. The Bible said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, there's the word that I want you to notice, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. If you read that in the New International Version of the Scriptures, it would say this, Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Now is the time for people of faith to stand strong and stand tall while the world is reeling and rocking and and doesn't really know where we're headed. The church, the people of God, people of faith must stand strong in faith and believe God. The Bible said that Abraham did not stagger at the promises of God. He did not waver at what God had told him. I am convinced that these are the times that we must not waver nor stagger at the things that God has promised and given to us for these last days. These are testing times. I, I, I submit to you that every faith must be tested in every man. The scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7 that the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. What Peter is saying to us, that your faith is going to be tried. It's going to be tested. It's going to be tested as gold is tested in the fire. But he said, if you will keep believing, in essence, this is what he was saying to us. You believe in a Jesus that you have never seen, but your faith lets you believe in him. And it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. But he said this, receiving the end of your faith. I want you to think about that today, the end of your faith. Where will your faith take you? And what will your faith accomplish in your life? Let me tell you this morning, my faith is in the word of God. My faith is in what I know. My faith is not in what I see. For the scripture said we must walk by faith and not by sight. The biblical definition of faith is found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And it said this, for faith is the substance of things hoped for. Or now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we don't see the end. We don't understand where we're going. We don't always see where the path is leading us. But here's what we do know. We can stand firm upon the word of God. We can stand upon the name that is above every name. We can stand upon the promises of God. I spoke to you last Sunday about standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. Today I'm asking you to keep the faith and to stay strong that you may see the end of your faith. The end of your faith will ultimately bring you the salvation of your soul. Let me read that, that verse from 1 Peter in the Living Bible translation. Here's what it says in verse 7. These trials are only to test your faith, to see whether or not it is strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests gold and purifies it. And your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So if your faith 
remain strong after being tried and in the test tube of fiery trials. It will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though not seeing him, you trust him. And even now you are happy with the inexpressible joy that comes from heaven itself. And your further reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters here, this pastor on this Sunday morning, we need people to stand stronger than they've ever stood. We need you to stand, sir, and be the leader of your home. We need you, mom, to pray like a praying mom and pray and surround your kids with prayer and your home with prayer. I believe that God would have us to say publicly and privately, our faith is not in man. Our faith is in God. We are in crisis. We are in terrible times. There's never been a day like we're living in. We are in unchartered course here today. We've never been where we are in this generation at this time. But let me tell you, the God that I serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And let me also tell you what the devil has has meant for evil. God will turn it to good if we will just believe him. I got to studying and reading the word of the Lord this week. And Joseph, Joseph said to his brethren, after all was said and done, after he was sold into slavery and they lied to his father and he wound up being in, in authority in the land of Egypt, he looked at his brethren and he said this to them, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass and as, it, as it is this day to save much people alive. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying to you that whatever evil has come, God can turn it into good. I preached long ago that God can take the devil's own weapons and use them against him. And what the devil has tried to do is strike fear in the heart of every person in this world. I submit to you on this Sunday morning that faith will overcome that. And faith in God will say, you can be like the Hebrew children. You can be like those men that were about to be thrown into the fire. They said, go ahead and throw us in. He may not deliver us, but here's what we do know. He's able to deliver us. Our faith is in God. Could I preach to you this morning for just a few minutes? Get your faith and make it strong and put it in the word of God. That's why we read this book. That's why we study this book. That's why we believe this book. It's because the author of this book has, has us in his hand and we can trust him and believe him. I love what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4. He said, be careful for nothing, verse 6, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen to what it said in the Living Bible translation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, hear this preacher today. Have faith in God. Faith can move mountains, mountains of fear and of doubt. Faith can move mountains. So why don't you try your faith out? Why don't you just believe God through all of this? Don't live with fear. He said, and listen, here's, here's the new international version. I, I put another version here, two more, because I want you to see what it's really saying. In verse 6 it said, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. Don't get anxious. Just start giving your request to God in prayer and in petition. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Somebody says, preacher, are you crazy? How can we have peace in these troubled times? I'm afraid of this or I'm afraid of that. And I don't know. I can't sleep at night. Ladies and gentlemen, put faith in God. All I can tell you is he will give you peace that is not explained by man and it's beyond the comprehension of mortal man but there's a peace in knowing that God has everything the church has got to rise up in faith the people of God have got to stay strong in faith here's what I know Here's what I know, and I'm preaching. I wish all of you were in this building with me today. I tell you right now, but but I feel the Holy Ghost in what I'm saying to you right now. Here's what I know, and this scripture has been on me, and you place it anywhere in your life you want to. But Romans 8 and 28, one of my favorite scriptures said, and we know, just say it to yourself, we know. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We know that all things work together for good. Now I want you to understand something. He didn't say everything that happened to us was good. But he said everything worked together for good. I submit to you on this Sunday morning in the middle of a national and and worldwide crisis. I'm telling you on this Sunday morning when this is past and this too shall pass. When it is past, more people are going to be God conscious than has been in the past. I submit to you that more people are going to come to the house of God. People who have been away from God are coming back to God because now we have seen it doesn't take a war. It doesn't take a nuclear hope. Holocaust. It doesn't take two armies fighting. It can take a little virus and shut a world down. So we know and understand how uncertain times are. The only stable thing that I know is Jesus Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. So I'm trusting him and I know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose hear me and hear my heart today stay strong whatever you do stay strong give pray love testify spread the gospel do it in your community do it on your job do it at home wherever you can keep doing the work of God just stay strong in your faith if you'll stay strong there's going to be a day in the very near future when the presence and the power of God is going to overwhelm us again as a congregation gathered together in a church we will assemble assemble again in this assembly God is going to take care of us stay strong say it all week long Put it in your put it in your in your notes. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your cell phone. Stay strong. Make it make it to come up on your phone when you open it. Just stay strong because your faith really does matter. So I leave you this morning with this thought. Keep your faith and stay strong. God is in charge. I want to pray with you. I want to pray blessings over your home today. I want to pray for protection over your children, your families. I want to pray that God would do a mighty, mighty work in your life. If you're watching today and you don't know him, I want to tell you there is no experience like being baptized in his wonderful name and being filled with his glorious spirit. You don't have to be at this altar at this church today. You can lift your hands right where you are. You can kneel right by your couch or your, or your lazy boy. You can kneel by the side of your bed and say, Oh God, put in me that great faith today. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire today that I may endure the fiery darts of the wicked. If you're testing my faith, God, just know this. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust you. 
Would you just bow your heads wherever you are today? Let me pray for you right now. Oh, God, would you move mightily upon the people that are hearing my voice today? Those that will listen at a later time. God, would you instill great faith? Would you move in our minds and in our hearts? I pray the power of protection, the Spirit of God in our homes. I pray, Lord, that you would let angels encamp around about us. I pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself as only you can through these times of hardship be our strength. Through these times of struggle, be our help. You said you were a very present help in the times of trouble. We're in trouble, God. We need you now. We know you're here. We ask you and invite you into our homes and into our lives. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're going to do. I give thanks in everything today, for this is the will of God concerning us. I pray for every family, every man, every woman, every young person, every child. I pray for Christian Life Church that you would keep us in the hollow of your hand and let the blessings of God be upon us mightily. In Jesus' name we pray. I trust you have a great and blessed week. Stay safe. Do what we're being asked to do. I'm doing that. I trust you will. Go only where you have to go. Follow the instructions of our leaders. We'll be back in the house of God in just a few days if if the Lord will help. We believe that. But regardless of how long, stay strong and keep the faith. May God bless you. I love you all. In Jesus' name.